What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 12 here in the SFL, and we are taking on the 6-4 and four Chicago Elks, and that means we will also be taking on a subscriber player today. That's right. Running back Darian Woolcott, shout out at Row Colors Fusion in the comments. We will be taking on his squad today. And speaking of subscribers, would like to announce to you guys that we now have 32 subscribers in the league here in the SFL. So that is just awesome. If you want to join the SFL, check the pinned comment below. I, it'll explain everything I need to add you. And if you're new to the series, you should probably go back and watch episode one just so you know what's going on. And I think that you will like this series and enjoy watching it as much as I enjoy making it. So we got two new subscribers joining the SFL here in this episode today. So let's get a quick sneak peek at those guys. First up, we got wide receiver here, Jaden Taylor. Shout out at Jaden Taylor 4490 in the comments. Joining the Albuquerque Armadillos, who now have three subscribers on this squad. So that is good to see. Good to see the team and the league going. Jaden here is 6'3", 160 pounds out of Texas Tech. He is a 21-year-old rookie. And taking a look at his stats here, he is definitely a route technician. 96 on the short route, 90 on the medium and the deep Decent speed, decent hands, but that route running man, I would say that is very uh, Devontae Adams-esque. So interesting to see if he is going to be an instant uh, contributor here on the Armadillos. And now moving over to the Dublin Shamrocks, who keep finding ways to win. They are on a very, very good streak. We got Ty Royal Smoochie Wallace here. Uh, love the key and peel reference, by the way. Shout out at Lane Hudson 4514 in the comments. Shamrocks needed some corner help because aside from Marlon Humphrey, it was looking a little bleak. They also got an injury here to William Jackson. So hopefully Ty Royal here will be able to add an instant spark. He is a six foot two, 190 pound rook, uh, two year man, I should say, out of Miami. And also got the Miami colors for your brother. So there you see the green and the orange shooter sleeves there. But getting a look at Samuchi Wallace's stats. Very, very fast, 95 speed. He can accelerate and jump very well. Pretty good man coverage, not the best in zone coverage, but all around a solid, solid corner. So should help to bolster this Dublin Shamrocks defensive unit. So getting a look at the Chicago Elks roster, they are six and four early stages of this season. I think they were one of the best teams, but they've lost a couple and now they are, uh, you know, fighting to stay 500, over 500. And of course, we're going to try to foil that today. But they got Trevor Lawrence uh, at the helm here. Always a good, solid quarterback. Still a superstar in this game. But the man uh, of the day, the man of the episode is Mr. Darian Wolcott that I mentioned at the beginning. Shout out at Row Colors Fusion in the comments. They cut my man off of the team, so I had to go add him back. I'm like, what's the, what is the Elks uh, GM slash coach doing? They were trying to get ready of Darian, but I would not allow it. Oh no, Darian here is a six foot, 210 pound running back out of Clemson. So I guess uh, Trevor Lawrence is a former teammate in this uh, SFL universe, right? The one thing that sticks out to me, those 99s, 99 juke move and 99 spin move. Our DBs, who are very good, might I add, they might want to stock up on the Ben Gay today, right? The Tiger Bomb. They may be getting their ankles broke by Darian. Uh, you know, he's a solid all around, but man, oh man, is he elusive. And I'm sure that will be on full display here today. Steven Kaur, they got Jerry Judy, Michael Gallup, not here. So Darius Slayton, Diami Brown. I mean, Judy is a fine receiver, but I wouldn't say re wide receiver number one material. Evan Ingram, pretty good tight end to go along with uh, Drew Sample there. And getting a look at their offensive line, they got Vet Cam Robinson, always a good option at left tackle. Lake Tomlinson, okay guard, but starting to age. Jake Andrews, rookie, but not very good, 67 overall. And then uh, Jamari Sawyer on the right side as the right guard. And then a rookie out of Ohio State, Paris Johnson Jr. So their offensive line is okay. Nothing too crazy. And then going over to the defensive side, they got George Karloft. Just pretty good option on the edge. 
Jermaine Johnson, decent as well. And defensive tackle, they got Kobe Turner and Daquan Jones. So nothing too scary on the defensive line. A couple of pieces there to watch out for, but I think that our offensive line should be able to keep those guys at bay. Michael Hoyk is the left outside linebacker. Middle linebackers, not that good. Landon Collins, who was, I thought was a safety, but apparently not. Isaiah Simmons there as well. And Robert Spillane. So their uh, linebackers and D-line, not very good. And they're also missing Tredavious White as well. So Byron Murphy and uh, Christian Benford going to be the CB1 and 2, respectively. Jesse Bates, though, great free safety, one of the best in the league. Minka Fitzpatrick, great strong safety, one of the best in the league. So what they lack on the line, they definitely make up for in the secondary. And they got Tanner Brown kicking the ball and Thomas Morstead putting the ball away so that's going to be the Elks team that we're going to be going up against today we are eight and three got this uh, AFC East well within our grasp I mean we got it now it's just a matter of winning and we're starting to get into I would say the latter stages here of season number one of the SFL so if you guys are fired up for some more content please like the video and subscribe if you are not subscribed remember at 1000 subscribers I will do an NFL jersey giveaway and if you love Madden you should be subscribed to this channel. Man 25 is about to come out here in a few months, you know, four or five months or whatever. And I will be putting out tons of content for that as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Chicago. The Elks Den, it's called, and get ready for the game. Kind of getting UCLA vibes here for the Chicago Elks and uh, have not played this team yet. So always exciting to play a subscriber, of course, but always exciting to play a team that we have not played so far and uh you know our team the thunderbirds here of course that's the team that i am using we are good only lost three games so far this season and our offense is going to be on display first so let's see what we can get done against this uh not very good defense i would say aside from the safeties patrick peterson trying to make something happen and he most certainly will not <laughs> Jordan Love, though, having a great season, over 3,000 yards, really good touchdown interception ratio, and I cannot wait to see Jordan Love in year number two in real life because I think that the sky is the limit for that young man. And uh, speaking of subscribers, going to give it to Tubby McDouble here, our subscriber running back who has been playing great as of late. Tubby only able to pick up two, but he has been finding the end zone at a very, very high clip. And uh, hopefully he can continue to do that today because we're still, I believe, still missing Zay Jones, our wide receiver number two. Is he back? No, he is not. So definitely uh, going to lean on McDouble just a little bit more. I pressed the wrong button, I promise you. <laughs> Tried to go to R1, and I went to X, which was the tight end. That was not the right option. Okay, so facing some early adversity here. Third and eight. Ball's only on the 17. So I think that we're going to have to put our trust in Olave, who's been balling out, but Jordan Love overthrows him. I have been hitting Olave consistently on that press, especially when the free safety, just like Jesse Bates did there, cheats in to kind of play the run. Olave had him beat, but Jordan Love just overthrew him. So a three and out for the Thunderbirds, not the way that uh, I wanted to start this game. So we are going to get a look at Trevor Lawrence and the Chicago Elks team. Of course, Darian Wolcott, the subscriber, and they look okay on paper. Trevor Lawrence having, uh, I mean, the touchdown interception ratio is about the same as Love. Not as many yards, of course, but still having a fine season. But I will say this Thunderbirds defense, especially our DBs, we have been showing up and showing out. So let's throw a little pressure here at Lawrence, see how he handles that. He's going to give it to Darian Wolcott. His uh, first carry of the game is good for four. Second and six here. Lawrence going to stay single back. So let's keep the pressure going. And this time it's not going to be a run to Wolcott. We almost got him. And that was a heck of a catch there. Way to hang on to that ball for Evan Ingram. We had the pressure coming in hot and heavy on Trevor Lawrence. And I'm going to continue to go pressure here because I like the way that it has looked so far up until this point. So a little dime blitz here for Lawrence. And wide open there on the outside is Darius Slayton. So Trevor Lawrence looking pretty sharp to start this game out. Gain a 12 on the play. Going pressure man again, but I'll tell you what. If we keep getting carved up, I may have to switch it to zone and it looks like that just might be the move 
Evan Ingram, another catch, and Lawrence is definitely finding his receivers with ease here, so we're not really giving him a lot of uh, trouble back there in the pocket. Not really a lot of adversity, so may have to switch to zone for a little bit. I don't like the fact that Ingram is Bruh. so open there. It's a curl route from Judy. And Lawrence starting out perfect, four for four for 31 yards, and the Elks are marching down the field. Yeah, let's go zone for a little bit. Lawrence is uh, having his way with our man coverage, and I don't really like how that's going. That could be a pick. Oh, Jordan Poyer had a play on the ball, but it was just slightly out of his reach. And Jerry Judy hangs on for a big game, getting this all the way down to the one. I thought for sure he'd get a look at Poyer there, tried to put that big mitt get a hand on the pigskin and he was unfortunately just missed it by a short and a curly and with the ball on the one yard line here it is not looking good for the defense of the Thunderbirds here let's see if Wolcott gets it no. touchdown for our subscriber Darian Wolcott so there you go brother hope you're watching it you just put your boys on the board first gonna do a little dance and a celebration in the end zone and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, that was way too easy. If that is any indication of how our defense is going to play today, going to have to have a little talking to to the boys. Wow, they got momentum already. So they gain momentum faster. They have improved blocking and improved catching. Um, so basically just screw us, right? That's okay, though. Just got to find a way to respond on this drive. Let's just give it to you. Check our fullback. Got to get Jordan Love some completions. You know, just like in basketball, sometimes if you're struggling, you just got to see the ball go through on a couple free throws, and that can make all the difference. And I'll tell you what, though, we're going to go McDouble on the fullback lead here, but we need some good blockers. We got it. There goes Tubby. Oh, nice, vicious truck there on Jesse Bates. And how about Tubby, our subscriber player out of Oregon State? Making a big run here, and that is our first first down of the game. Come out shotgun here in the tight formation. Going to be looking for a little mesh spot. We got a receiver open, but that's going to be picked. Tell me that is pass interference, please. It has to be. That's coming back, right? That's coming back. It's got to come back. Christian Benford gets the pick, but show me P.I. Show me P.I. <laughs> Definitely not P.I., Holding on Donovan Smith. Wow. Have not thrown too many picks with love as of late, but that I did not even see that DB there. And is Wolcott going to score again? He is not, but he is going to get it down to the one yard line. This is not good for the squad here, guys, because we're at risk of going down 14 nothing. And I'll tell you what, we have not really faced too much adversity in this series. So this would kind of be not a first, but. Hasn't happened too much. Evan Ingram is going to speak that into existence. We better get our stuff together and better get our stuff together fast. Yeah, Jordan Love not having a good start to this one, but still a lot of football left. So we can easily turn it around, but uh, kind of got to stop wasting so much time here. There is Valdez Scantling. Oh, there's a breakup. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, dude. It was in his mitts. What do you want? What do you want, Marquez? I put it right in your hands. Of course, Marquez uh, about a scantling. No stranger to drops, but this one is not starting out good, guys. Definitely not. There's a night. Okay, about a scantling redeems himself. That's good. Jordan Love only two for six for 17 yards and a pick. Where do they do that at? Tell me, where do they do that at? Got to try to keep the good times rolling here because I don't want to have to settle for field goals. I will be honest with you, being down 14-0, uh, don't want to settle for kicks if we don't have to. Darren Waller, I need you to catch that. Thank you. He's overdue for a big game, shaking tackles and getting this down to the two-yard line. Darren Waller needs a big game today. He's been rather quiet as of late, so I feel like uh, a big game for him would do wonders. Now, on the two-yard line, fresh set of downs. Should be able to pick this up with ease. Kareem Hunt going to try to punch it in, and he will. All right. Was getting a little dicey there, not going to lie. So a good response by the T-Birds, but right now it's our defense that needs to show up. They haven't been really doing anything so far in this game. 
and pretty much letting Trevor Lawrence pick us apart. So hopefully they can rebound and have a good defensive drive. But Lawrence is still a perfect seven for seven. Has not missed a pass yet and gonna need to change that. I think it all does start with pressure and Wolcott gonna be stopped in the backfield by Zach Cunning or Bobby Wagner rather. First really good defensive play that we've seen all game. So <laughs> they, we were definitely overdue for that. So audible into man coverage here. Guest pass shade inside. Sounds like a good idea to me. Miles Garrett, can we get to Lawrence? Wasn't able to get to him, but luckily we do force him to throw his first incomplete pass of the game. All right, guys, need you to get these Elks off of the field, please. Desperately need that. It's a screen pass blocking a setup beautifully. You got to be kidding me, man. Diami Brown on the screen. That was a good call. That's about the last thing that I would have expected. And we give up 12 yards on a screen pass. No bueno, guys. No bueno. Not super impressed with what I'm seeing here so far. See if uh, Lawrence gives it to Wolcott. He is. Monster gain potential. Luckily, we got him for a gain of nine. That will take us to the end of the first. All right. Well, we got some work to do. Uh, yards are about equal. So I guess really it's just that one interception that we threw with Love that was nearly returned for a pick six. That was our big Big bugaboo in this one, but really the big bugaboo is the defense, and it doesn't look like anything's really changing on this drive. Thought we were going to have a chance to force a punt. We did not. Going to be a give to Wolcott. Nice juke. We know he's good at that with the 99 juke move. Picking up a first down and moving the chains. Lawrence looking like he is going to have a monster game in this one, and we cannot do anything to slow him down which is a very concerning because usually we're pretty good at slowing teams down. Yaya Diaby! You gotta be kidding me, man, what? Oh my God. Okay, so I think that Madden just predetermined that the Chicago Elks were gonna win this one. I mean, that was perfect defense from the pass rush. As you could see, we almost got to Lawrence there with Yaya Diaby and it was a heck of a throw. And, you know, that's Marcus Peters who leads our leads our team in picks. Somehow Jerry Judy was just able to moss us. And this could be a very, very long game because right now, aside from that one good drive we had, we really can't seem to do anything right. Let's go Tubby on the screen here. Second and seven from the 28. Let's go ahead and pick up some positive yardage, please. Give me some blocks. Tubby, not the fastest guy in the world, but boy, howdy, Batman, is he strong. Trucking defenders aside, picking up a great first down. Come out single back here. Olave's getting pressed, so of course I'm going to test it. And if I see Jesse Bates drop down, this might just have to be a shot, which he did drop down. Can we finally get to Olave? Great, great help defense or recovery, I should say. By Byron Murphy. Third and long upcoming now. Got to go TE attack here. This could be a good play to Waller. I'm not going to be able to roll out to the left, though, I don't believe. No, I am not. Waller, I need you to catch this. Thank you. Oh, and he trucks a defender, too. Luckily, Jesse Bates was there. Or that one could have been a house call. But this is a good drive, too. We're doing a good job responding and answering. We're going to have to because it does not look like the Elks are going to be slowing down anytime soon. Um, this could be RPO again, but just in case, I'm going to ID up Minka Fitzpatrick as the mic. Yep, it's not. Tubby, some more room to operate. This should be a good one. Picking up about 11 on the play. Tubby now at 6 for 31, running with force. So second and 10, we'll go play fake here. Going to be a little crossing route. There's Valdez Scantling, who's playing great in this one. believe that's his third catch of the afternoon. And he gets the ball all the way down to the two-yard line. Inside zone to Hunt. Seems like a great idea. They got their... Oh, yeah. Walking... Oh, oh, God. Oh, my <laughs> oh I kind of took my hand off the controller there. I was about to say walk in the park, which it was. But Kareem almost got stopped up. But a nice, nice response from us, you know. We were uh, kind of in dangerous territory there. We uh, could have let this game get out of hand very fast. But a couple good responses from the T-Birds got us still in the game. But again, I know I sound like a broken record. Our defense has to show up. Zone's not working. Man's not working. I mean, what's uh, what's a coach to do here? You know, besides just lube up. Bobby. Oh, God, I missed him, man. Uh, I had a free shot with Bobby Wagner, and I just completely whiffed. 
because I was uh, spamming on the turbo button and Trevor Lawrence was able to elude me as he typically does. Now, Lawrence coming out shotgun here. Got to make sure we get Jordan Poyer over to Evan Ingram. It's going to be a Darian Wolcott run. Bobby Wagner shut him down. So other than that touchdown, Wolcott having a little bit of a tough time back there in the backfield. That's about the one good thing our defense is doing so far in this one. Now, please, for the love of everything that is holy and just, can we please just get these Elks off the the field nope why would we be able to because jerry judy is cooking us on those curl routes i'm gonna have to uh probably move our guys in a little bit because our coverage is not working nice play call by nick sirianni i see of course the chicago elks formerly the philadelphia eagles in this franchise see if lawrence goes back to wolcott here he is single back 13 personnel and oh god i had a chance with graham tell you man i guess i don't know if it's just me i'm, I'm having chances with these with these uh defensive uh ends and these defensive linemen to get shots on lawrence but i'm just missing just whiffing it back there so no one to blame i guess but myself on that one jay monstro our subscriber defensive tackle would love to see him make a play we are still shutting down wolcott though that's gonna make it second and nine from the 27 i'm guessing pass here don't know if it's going to be a pass, but I'm I'm guessing pass. That much is for sure. See what Lawrence operates out of the gun with. It is going to be a pass. Brandon Graham. How about the veteran dropping back out into coverage? And it's a good thing he did because that would have been a wide open on the completion. And come on, man. We've gotten them into third downs before. We have gotten them into third downs before and just haven't been able to capitalize. So this hopefully can be the one time that we do luckily it was an overthrow by lawrence yeah the running back wide open on the wheel route and i would say holding them to a field goal compared to what we've seen so far it's a huge huge w points is still points yes and uh tanner brown the rookie out of oklahoma state is going to knock that through but it's nice to see the elks not finish a drive in the end zone for once a little bit of clock management is going to be in order here I'm going to go ahead and snap this with Kareem because I like the coverage and Kareem fumbled it. But luckily we did get it back. Wow. I'm not sure who that was who picked that ball up, but we're going to go back and watch it on film. And that man's getting a raise because that would have been tragic. Now, Tubby on the draw. Come on, please, Tubby. I know you can do it. Thank you, Tubby running great. Picking up a nice game there, getting this ball to the 43. Minute 30 here, just got to get into scoring range. So let's see who can get open. I don't really like any of this. I'm just going to throw it away. Maybe I could have had Kareem there. He was running the out route out of the backfield, but I just really wasn't ready to risk that, throw another pick or something like that. And Olave up the seam this could be a nice shot there. Got to watch out for Jesse Bates, though. He is always, always great in coverage, as we know. And I'm going to get sacked there. Big sack by Jermaine Johnson. And now um, I'm going to be in no hurry to snap this ball. Got to pick this up, guys, if we want any shot of scoring before the half. Somebody is open. It's a bad throw from Love. I should have touched past it, and I bullet passed it, which I'm notorious for. I know. I'm notorious for. I do that all the freaking time. And we are going to have to punt the ball back to the Elks. And 43 seconds is a world of time especially with all three timeouts. So defense, go over there on the sideline, smell the smelling salts, do what you got to do to get amped up first. Let's tackle Chuba Hubbard. That's a good start. 32 seconds, can we hold him? We're going to start out blitz here on Lawrence. We got defenders in the A-gaps. Hopefully, yeah, it's going to be a quick <laughs> read there. And uh-oh, uh-oh, this could be disastrous. Look, look at Miles Garrett out there tracking down Evan Ingram. But that was disastrous, though. That's, that was disastrous. 25 seconds left. Elks got two timeouts. So clock is really not a factor. Especially uh, all they got to do really is get into field goal range. So it's going to take a great effort from us. Are we up to the task? I'm going to say probably not. Another overthrow by Lawrence, though. So we are starting to see that a little bit. And if we can hold them to no points, I will just be the happiest boy in the world going to take a lot, but I believe we can do it. Wolcott there in the backfield. Another overthrow by Lawrence. Wow. 
At this rate, we might get the ball back with a chance for like a Hail Mary or something. Is safety blitz a good idea though? Uh, probably not. Am I gonna do it anyways? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, time it's not an overthrow. Okay, so they're at least gonna get a field goal. Bare minimum, uh, which I'm not happy about. I'm not happy about that. I'm having a tough time processing it. Uh, but a touchdown, <laughs> that could be it. Oh, and that could have been a pick. Wow, Diami Brown's running the wrong way. Looks like Sirianni is going to take the timeout and kick the field goal. And uh, we're going to go into the locker room down by 13, which I'm also not happy about. And the Elks get the ball back. I would say this is probably the worst this team has looked. But second half turnarounds are a thing. We're just going to have to make sure we execute and fire on all cylinders. We're not doing poorly on offense. I mean, the Elks are out gaining us, yes. It's just uh, we can't stop them. We do have that one mistake, and so far Trevor Lawrence and the Elks have zero. So we're going to look around the SFL here, and uh, Melbourne Dreadnoughts do got a subscriber on that team, Alexander Klebeck. No stats shown for him, and it looks like his Dreadnoughts did get the loss as well to our division rivals, the Lumberjacks, and Michael Yakin, subscriber quarterback, had a pretty good game in that one. And subscribers all across the board here. We have Mason Buchanan, who is playing great for the Bisons. They have a strong lead against the 7-4 and four Wizards. And Brooklyn Nighthawks in our division. Wow, they just can't catch a break, man. They are struggling. Derek Daragosa did not have a great game. He's also a subscriber player as well. And the Nighthawks do fall to 2-9, and nine, so good for us. They are a division foe but not good for them. And as far as our offensive focus here, we got to go throw it deep. We are going to need some big, big plays on offense. And Lawrence, I mean, he carved us up on the medium pass, uh, which I did make, by the way, our focus. We're going to make defend the deep pass our focus because I don't want to take away all that run support. And, uh, yep, go ahead, guys. Grab the Vaseline. Grab some Tylenol while you're at it, some Advil, because unless things change dramatically... This could be a long, long second quarter here for ya boy. Come on, D. New quarter means new opportunities. Let's uh, just play like it's a 0-0 ball game, right? It's going to be an outside run to Wolcott. And, oh, thought he had the edge there for a minute. Does still turn it into a gain of five. I thought that one could have been gone and off to the races. I'm going to continue to go with pressure here, although has not really worked. Typically, that's our bread and butter. It's press man with, you know, with a uh, blitz and uh, it's just not working too well this game. Darian Wolcott shugs, uh, shrugs away the tackler. It's going to make it third and one. Antoine Winfield with seven tackles, I believe it said. So that's good to see. But the question is, man, are we going to ever be able to stop them on third down? I'm going to play like it's a run, but uh, I'll probably be wrong. I usually am. No, I'm not wrong. Wolcott just barely got what he needed. Only averaging about three yards per carry, but that was a huge first down gain by him. And now if uh, Darian Wolcott starts to get it going with the way that we can't stop Lawrence, we will be in for a world of hurt. Need a sack, man. Zach Cunningham, can you get back there? This is going to be a run for sh Fuck yeah. sure. It's an end around to Judy, and we're actually there to stop him for... A loss of one on the play. Thunderbirds today, we cannot stop anybody on defense. So I'm not holding my breath on this one. I'm going to play like it's a Wolcott run again, which it will Fuck yeah. be. It's a pitch. Don't agree with that play call at all, Nick Sirianni. Why wouldn't you just run it up the gut? All you needed was probably less than a yard. It was a pitch play. We were there to sniff it out beautifully. And this could be just the opportunity that we need to get back into this game. Patrick Peterson, show me something on the kick return. Never going to happen because it never does. Could be Tubby on the Texas route. If not, Valdez Scantling. Oh, oh, Kareem, I meant. Kareem, I meant. Hang on to that ball. He couldn't. It was a tough, it was a tough catch. We put him in a pretty difficult situation there. So cannot blame Kareem Hunt too much for that. Would have loved for him to hang on to it, obviously, but, you know, twas not to be. So, a little mesh spot here. See if we can pick this one up at least. Valdez Scantling, his good day continues. believe that's his fourth catch now, and 
Maybe all four of them have been first downs. Kareem on the inside zone. Show me something. Show me some blocks. We got him. Trying to cut back. I should have used my uh, little cut, you know, uh, L2 button there. I did not. I kind of just stopped in my tracks, unfortunately, and uh, wasn't really the best play. But could have uh, been better, I should say. I will take a gain of eight any day of the week and freaking twice on Sunday. Now, oh, I shouldn't have done RPO, but a nice block there on the outside. Not going to matter. Olave did hold a good block, but that's going to make it third and inches. Got to be Tubby on the dive in the inside zone. It has to be. We should be able to pick up one yard, and this might also be four down territory. Not even going to sit here and lie to you, but again, not going to matter. Tubby, he breaks away. Does Tubby have the speed? Does he have the speed? He does not. He is not the uh, fastest horse in the race, so to speak, but he does get this all the way down to the three-yard line. And don't look now, guys, but the T-Birds are fighting and clawing our way with our big old talons back into this one. Going to go wide stick, but I got to be careful because Jesse Bates is out there on coverage. Come on, Chris. Ah, I dropped it. Had to dive for it. I had to lead it away to the right because, of course, Jesse Bates is uh, such a good defender, you know. So I had to kind of lead him away, and Olave had to make a diving attempt for it and wasn't able to get it. Now, we're going to go Kareem again on the inside zone. Not super confident in this defense, but not going to matter. Kareem gets his second touchdown of the afternoon. Kind of poaching him away from Tubby. I get it, but these running backs do. I wouldn't say they split reps. It's definitely more in favor of Tubby. But Kareem does get his fair share of touches, and uh, he played really, really well before Tubby joined the fray. But it is now a six-point game, and these T-Birds are right back into it. Finally had a good defensive drive on the last one, and just going to have to hopefully pick up where we left off and do it again. All right, D, let's do it. You did it last time. Let's do it again. It's going to be a Darian Wolcott run. This could spell disaster, guys. This could spell disaster. Easily Wolcott's best run of the afternoon. He had uh, struggles in the first half. He's starting to figure it out, and it looks like the outside run is where they're really getting him involved. So I may have to think about kind of having somebody out there on the outside just to kind of watch, make sure it's going to be Wolcott again, cutting it back inside. This time Bobby Wagner's there, but will that be a face mask? Hopefully it's a hold. It is a hold. Okay. Very good. So I'm going to move this thing back 10 yards. Thank you so much, one Diami Brown. Got to trust it. The press blitz. Hopefully we can get somebody back there to Lawrence. Uh, we do. Finally, it's Bobby Wagner. Thank you. Man, oh, man, I've called that play or that look, I should say, not that specific play. I've called that look like 10 times, and so far it has yielded nothing. But that time it yielded a big old sack, Ron Jeremy style even. And now we got a chance to potentially take the lead. How about them apples? I love it. Hope you guys too. Tubby averaging 7.7 .7 yards on the ground. Probably going to go to him a lot on this drive too. Don't go anywhere. We are set for a big, big quarter. Held the Elks off the scoreboard that entire third quarter. And of course, we uh, did get in for a score of our own. And I'm going to try my diddly freaking darndest to go run game as much as possible. Jordan Love not having the best game of the afternoon. Nice push of the pile there by Graham Glasgow. Yeah, Chicago Elks, a very good team in terms of takeaways. Only one today, and it came in the very, very early stages of the game. So as long as we play smart football, which you always want to do that, doesn't matter what situation you're in, as long as we play smart football, I think we got a pretty good chance. Let's just give it to Kareem Hunt. I saw him getting open on the curl. I saw Isaiah Simmons go away. And that will result in a first down. Into Elks territory ever so slightly. We're going to go play action boot. Got to get Olave involved. He's been pretty quiet in this one and really wish. Oh, please pick that up. Thank you so much, Joe Ta or uh, Logan Thomas. I needed somebody to hold a block for love. And there could have been some space to operate. But uh, nobody had any interest in doing that. I can tell you that much. So that was a very scary situation. was almost disastrous. Somehow we did avoid it. Second and eight. We're going to go back to the mesh concept. And it's about a scantling continuing to make grabs. That one only for a minimal game, though. And that will be third and four. Wish Olave was getting pressed, but he's not. 
So this is probably going to be one of my tight ends. It's Logan Thomas. So open. Just go out of bounds. I've seen enough fumbles, luckily, that were both recovered by us. But I've seen enough fumbles to know when it's time to just get out of bounds. And I'm going to go back to this play action boot rollout. I really, really want to get Chris Olave involved. He's been our savior these latter stages of the season. How in the world was that picked by Minka Fitzpatrick? I know he's good, okay? But, like, what are we talking about here? What are we doing? Maybe could have led that pass down. I get it. But, like, how? I mean, both players are in there for position. And, I don't know, the ball must have a magnet on it. Minka must have magnets on his glove. I mean, what can you really say? That was an all-star level pick from an all-star level player. Would love to get a pick back of our own. We get picks all the time, uh, but so far not in this game. And I got to be cognizant of this outside run as well. So I'm going to use her up on Antoine Winfield. The outside run has been hit and it's going to be an inside run and stuffed there by Zach Cunningham and Yaya Diaby. Got him in a third and 12 and they're, they're bringing out their goal line. They're bringing out their goal line defense here. Don't let that fool you, though, because players in Madden all the time, uh, you know, they, they get these, these crazy gainers on goal line situations. So we got to make sure that doesn't happen, which I thought for a moment it would. Good thing we used it up on Poyer and dropped him down. And we dodged the bullet. We're going to get the ball back. We have shut the Elks down in the second half. Morstead going to punt it. The 14-year veteran out of SMU. Should be a decent return opportunity for Peterson if I can get some blockers, which I do, trying to turn the Jets on. I will take a drive starting from the 42, though. It's motion over Chris Olave. I'm going back to the run game because I've seen enough picks. Two picks and two fumbles in this one, so got to definitely clean it up a bit. Tubby looking for blockers. He has it, and now he fumbled it. I'm getting a booth review on that. I'm getting a booth review on that. Tubby, why are you why are you doing the crying thing? Hold on. No. Booth review. Show it to me. Thank you. That one is coming back because they always do on the booth review. Under review. But what is going on with our guys? Fumbling, picking, doing stupid stuff that we that are big no-nos. We're gonna get the ball back, but how many freaking bullets are we gonna have to dodge in this one? And the clock is also winding down here as well, guys. So we have a chance to Punch this thing in. No, I don't want to ID up the defensive lineman as the mic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, but not going to happen. Show me something, Tubby. Oh, his great running continues. Tubby now at 115, playing like an all-star running back here in the you SFL. And I'm going to go back to the same play action rollout. I am confident that we can get it. Oh, my God, man. Protection wasn't there. Almost took a sack. It's going to be third and seven now. First look, I'm sending Olave. Depending on what Jesse Bates does, that could be my first read. Nope, it's not going to be, but I do got my tight ends. Oh, Waller just dropped it. What are we doing? And does a field goal... I mean, yeah, we got to do it. That is... That's very unfortunate. Let me not mess around and miss this, though, please. Thank you. Justin Tucker is going to drill it. I'll tell you what, man, our defense has had a huge turnaround coming out of the locker room, and we're really going to need them to continue that because we just missed out on a golden opportunity. We did make it a three-point uh, three score, three point game, I should say, not a three-score game. But a touchdown would have put us in the lead, given us all the momentum, and now we're going to have to stop the Elks or at least hold them to a field goal yet again. It's a good game, though. Hopefully uh, good content for you guys. Me, I got the nervous toots going on. Not even going to lie. And there is that Evan Ingram. It sure is. Sure is. And yeah, look, there you go. That's the that's the story. We are second in the SFL in sacks per game. Team sacks, I should say. We got one today. Just one. One singular sack. That's not going to get it done. LaMarcus Joyner. Maybe you can uh, get our second. We're going to send you on a blitz. So if we could time this right, maybe jump the A-gap. That could be money. Well, it's going to be a run anyways. Wolcott trying to show off that 99 spin, and he does. Now at 16 for 69. 
But more importantly, a big first down for the Elks. Pressing up again here. Bobby Wagner, can you get back there? It's going to be he does. Yes. Loss of one on the play because Bobby Wagner shot the A-gap and was able to uh, kind of shoestring tackle Darian Wolcott. And you know what? I'm, I'm not going away from Blitz. That's been about uh, the only thing that's been working as of late. I do need Patrick Peterson to get over here. Come on. Come on. Don't jump off sides. Got to get him on Wolcott. And it's an overthrow by Lawrence or perhaps just inaccurate. And we got a minute and 17 seconds to go down here and at least score a field goal, but hopefully a touchdown. And if that is the case, if we go on to do that and win this game, we would have held Chicago to no points in the entire second half when they had 27 going into the locker room. Do you believe in the birds? That is the question. I sure do. We're going to come out play action here. And we got Valdez Scantling, who's having a great game. And that's going to continue. Oh, I don't want to score this quick, though. Uh, he's lo losing steam anyways. Oh, my God. I almost didn't want to score there. Wow, how about MBS, man? Coming up clutch. But the problem here, though, is we got to take some time off of the clock, which we did kind of naturally anyways. Tubby on the draw seems like a good idea to me. He might score here. Going to get it down to the one-yard line, and we're going to go ahead and call a timeout. Reem Hunt has been money on these goal line situations. Can he be money again? I think he will. Four touchdowns on the afternoon. He's only averaging about two yards per carry. He's got more touchdowns than he's averaging yards per carry. And how about that? We get it into the end zone with 17 seconds left. Going to go ahead and kick this extra point to make it a four-point game. And that will force Chicago to have to get it into the end zone. With 17 seconds, probably going to be 80-something yards to go. It's going to be tough. Can our defense hang on? What does Trevor Lawrence have in the old bag of tricks? That is the question. Of course, we're just coming out coverage here. Going to guess pass and uh, just got to make sure we don't do anything dumb. 17 seconds to go. There's not a whole lot they can do other than just check up. Well, that's 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 not going to get you very close there, Trevor. I realize you got all three timeouts, but you need a lot of yardage, my friend. And those little check downs for six, it's not really going to do too much for you. So you might want to think about airing it out or maybe don't because now I'm nervous. They got it all the way down to midfield pretty much just like that. And with nine seconds, one timeout, I mean, a field goal does them nothing, right? Field goal does them nothing. So they got to find the end zone. We're going to have extra coverage out here. And he does find the receiver there, Slayton. 37-yard line, four seconds. All Lawrence can do is throw up a Hail Mary. Please, no P.I. Please, no P.I. As long as there's no P.I., this will be a ball game and an epic, epic comeback from the Thunderbirds. Oh, my God. I thought Ingram might have caught that. Wow. This might have been the most exciting game so far in this SFL series. Sirianni's like, what happened? We had 27 points at halftime, and I think they might have scored a field goal in the third quarter. I can't remember, but we either shut them out the entire second half, or if we didn't shut them out, we only held them to a field goal. But we came back and pulled off one of the more epic comebacks that I have seen in this SFL series. And I'll tell you what, it was not Jordan Love. He's played great so far this season. Did not have a good game. I mean, okay, 269 on the through the air. That's great. No touchdowns and two picks. Only a 58 quarterback rating. Trevor Lawrence did play pretty good. Two touchdowns and no picks. But it was not enough. Darian Woolcott finishes with 70 yards and a touchdown. Not quite four yards per carry. Tubby McDouble, though, 7.7 .7 yards per carry. A buck 24. But here is the real MVP of the game with his 2.8 yards per carry having ass, huh? but four touchdowns. He had all, uh, yeah, right? No. Did he have all of our touchdowns? No. We, well, yeah, he did, because we had a field goal. Four touchdowns and a field goal. So great job, Kareem Hunt. MVS, potential candidate for MVP as well in this game. Seven receptions for 141. 
Slayton played well. Ingram played well. I mean, they all pretty much played well. But uh, it was pretty much the MBS and Kareem Hunt show. And this one, uh, Winfield, 14 tackles for a free safety. That's pretty darn good. Picks from Fitzpatrick and Benford and a big sack from Bobby Wagner. So that will do it for this one. Thunderbirds do take the win. And now we got to see how our subscriber players performed here in week 12. Paris Black Knights dropped to the Snowhawks. And of course, we got uh, our subscriber brother duo there. Jaden Hayes with a pretty good game. Two touchdowns, one pick, but 262 through the air and we'll see if he did find his brother Caleb Hayes not for a touchdown but he did find him for two receptions for 51 yards and uh, also Kenneth Walker playing a pretty good impact in the receiving game as well Shamrocks just keep finding ways to win we got a new subscriber on that team too Jesse Buzo have a game my friend 297 yards through the air and two touchdowns he got uh who did he get involved Gabe Davis Luke Musgrave Tamir Gibbs so some pretty, pretty good production there. But we got a new cornerback. Let's see if we can find him in here. He, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Ty Royal, Smoochie Wallace, two tackles and a tackle for loss. No interceptions, but nice to see a big TFL there on the stat sheet. Dreadnoughts and Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks are AFC East division rival. Do pick up the victory there. Michael Yakin. A uh, pretty efficient game, not a lot of yards, but no mistakes. So 192 through the air and also two touchdowns as well. So that is good to see. And then taking a look at the receiving, we got Alexander Klublek here on the Dreadnoughts. Four receptions for 47 yards. And tight end James Briner, two receptions for 13 yards. Okay, see, Antlers get the loss and they were one of the best teams in the SFL. So... Don't know what happened there, but we got a subscriber cornerback on this team, C. Ben. He had seven tackles, no picks, but two big pass deflections. So there you go. Oh, my heart just breaks for the Canton Condors, man. They just continue to lose, unfortunately. Only uh, two wins on the season. They do have a very, very good receiver, Braden Keys. Didn't have the best game in this one. Only three catches for 35. He has been a touchdown machine as of late. And then we got three defenders on this team here for the... Let's filter to the Condors so I can uh, actually pay attention, see what I'm doing. Eli Sakowitz had five tackles and nothing else. Mike Collins had five tackles, no picks, but also a uh, forced fumble and a fumble recovery. So pretty good job there. San Juan Tigers get the victory over the St. Louis Bulls. We got a couple receivers and a couple defenders on here. How about Nick Stoyer? have a game my friend wow five catches for 101 yards that is awesome and then we also got our tight end here st james only one catch for six they just for whatever reason uh just don't seem to use him that much i don't know why and now we'll get a look at the love brothers here not real brothers but same last name the or love five tackles and a pass deflection so that was pretty good to see and then king love uh, one tackle, but a nice pass deflection in his own right. Orlando Orbits drop to the Houston Oilers. Two subscribers on this team. Not Kyler Murray. He didn't play uh, that well. We got a subscriber running back here, Johnny Waters. He only got the ball three times. Had a touchdown, which is good, but only three attempts. I mean, they do got Jonathan Taylor, but I did work Waters into uh, a lot of sets. So he had a touchdown and we will just go with that. Now, we also got a free safety here, Flash Parker. Flash had only two tackles in this one, so kind of a rough game for him. Talked about the Nighthawks, but they dropped a big, big loss to the Mounties. And Derek Daragosa didn't really have a good one, unfortunately. One touchdown, one pick, and 148 through the air. See who he threw his uh, lone touchdown to. It was to Jonu Smith. But uh, yeah, they got some weapons too, man. Thielen, Michael Thomas, Jamar Chase. So hopefully uh, they could bounce back here in the next couple weeks. Wow, Virginia Beach Blues. They've only lost one game up until this point, but they do drop to the Memphis River Hogs. And Josh Allen, he's been notorious this year for just having low yardage games. I cannot figure it out here. 
Easy Fuentes, who has been on a pretty good tear, subscriber, leads their team in touchdowns, had three for 48. So, I mean, with the amount of yards Josh Allen had, I guess that was like a third of it. So, still good job on that game, Easy. Sentinels and Dragons, subscriber on each team here. The Honolulu Dragons do pull off the victory. Wow, but Rocky DiBernardo, though, 349 yards and four touchdowns. Had a good old-fashioned duel with Brock Purdy, who had nearly 400 in his own right. These two quarterbacks were good. That would have been a fun game to watch. I'll tell you what. So good stats there by Rocky. And then, of course, we got our subscriber punter, Jack Mavros. But why is Evan McPherson? Oh, they didn't punt it at all. No punts in that game from the Dragons. Any from the Sentinels? Okay, Ethan Evans did. No punts, though, for the Honolulu Dragons. So sorry, Jack, if you're watching, but... I guess it's a good thing you didn't have to punt because your team pulled off an epic win. Armadillos lose a tight one to the uh, Tokyo Golden Eagles. And of course, we just added a subscriber to this team today. So taking a look first and foremost at, uh, let's see, the stats. Bjorn Jeffrey, two receptions for 20 yards. So that was pretty good. And Jaden Taylor had a great game in his inaugural game of the SFL. Did not result in a victory, but five receptions for 68 yards. Pretty good there. And then got to take a look at Arturo Esquivel. He might be hurt, though, still. I think he is. Yeah, he's not back from injury yet, I don't think. Arturo, subscriber on this channel, he got hurt in the game that we played against him. So he is still not back yet, unfortunately. Oh, is he? Yeah, no stats. I don't think he's back yet. Should be back soon, though. Hoping and praying. And finally, we got uh, Salt Lake City Bisons pulling off a big win against the Oakland Raiders. Couple subscribers here on the Bisons, Mason Buchanan. Wow. Ever since he joined the SFL, just been lighting up the stat sheet. Almost 300 yards and three touchdowns. And of course, we got, uh, oh my God, man. Okay. Nico PD, two, two attempts for nine yards. They got Kyron Williams, and I thought that he, I, I removed him from the team. Like, I, I cut him, but they signed him back. Like, what are we doing here? Nico Petey. Two attempts for nine yards, so sorry about that, brother. I'll go in there and fool with the death chart a little bit and try to uh, get you back in there to some more sets. And then linebacker Michael Breiner, two TFLs, five tackles, and also two big pass deflections as well. So nice game from him. And uh, hey, that was a great game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got our bye next week, and then we will be taking on the Salt Lake City Bisons, who we just showed with Mason Buchanan and Nico Petey. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.